Okay, first thing I did was I took off the bolts here and here and here, here and here. These had clamps on them right here and here. Those are in the car. The next thing I did was I took off this piece from right here. There's a bolt right here and this little top piece is what connects right here. The bolt goes in right here. This is the cruise control actuator. It goes right in here. That's all I've done so far except for I took the overflow hose right here which goes back here, connects right there, and right here. Right there. And then I also took off the big radiator hose which goes back right here. So that big radiator hose goes right here. That's all I've done so far. Okay, so I had to go to AutoZone and buy this adapter right here. Um, but the next step is I have to remove this bolt and this connector. This right here. So that's a 17 millimeter. And then that right there, well, that's going to have to be removed with a pair of pliers. Uh, because the fan is hydraulic driven, not electric. So I've got to remove those and got to capture them with a little makeshift oil pan there to catch the extra hydraulic fluid coming off of the power steering pump that drives the fan. Now I'm going to do that. Okay, so this sucker is incredibly tight. Uh, I've put all my leverage against it as I can and I just can't seem to get it loose. So what I'm going to have to do is put these clamps back on because as you see there's quite a bit of wiggle there and I think I'm losing some torque on that wiggle. That's why I can't get it loose. But that, I believe, is the union bolt. And according to my handy Haynes manual here, it's telling me that i got to remove that union bolt to get this out of here. So, got to put it back together a bit. Alright, so I tried for about five minutes to break that thing. Still not wanting to break. I'm going to go do some research online and make sure that this is the, the bolt that I'm trying to move. This sucker right here, I'm not going to put it in, but it's in there so tight I can't move it. And I'm putting everything I got into it, so I'm going to do some research online and see if that's really what I'm supposed to be taking off. Okay, so I got this bolt, that bolt, and that. No, I don't have that one back in, but I'm not going to put it back in for right now. I got the mounts back in, which, by the way, those are 12 millimeter bolts. These are tens. Got that back in. Now I'm going to give the uh, union bolt another shot and see if I can get that thing loose. Okay, so I just went on to AutoZone's website and found basically a picture that looks kind of like this. <laughs> exactly that part. So this is the correct thing and I do have to take it off and it is left hand or right hand threaded. So I just got to put some work into it. This will be fun. All right, 25 minutes later, we still haven't accomplished anything. It still sits there, right there, not moving. Yeah, it just has a little bit of marks on it, and I marked this up a little bit. But don't pay attention to that. I keep doing that. So I'm going to move on to the next step, which is removing the engine undercover, which hopefully that simple enough looks like it's not going to be Oops, sorry about that. Here, turn your full perspective around. Take those off, and then we'll move on to the next step. My father-in-law is looking at getting me a half-inch breaker bar. I got a three-quarter-inch breaker bar, but it's just not doing the trick. So if you going to get me a half-inch breaker bar, and I got an adapter, we'll try that. But for now, I'm going to get the engine cover, undercover off. All right, so that was pretty simple. I uh, just came off with four little bolts. These ones right here, with the big washers on them, and uh, as you can see where the holes are, there, 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 and there, and then there was another big screw back in the back there, and then this came off in two pieces. This one lifts on the front, this one connects to it, so when we put it back on there, 
need to remember that so that they go on there together. That's pretty simple. And there's also a piece, I think I can show you guys, right here. That's another undercover. You can take them, there's one on the other side as well. You can take those off if you want to, but I'm probably just going to leave them on because I don't think they're in the way. And of course, it might make a liar out of me. We'll see. Alright, so we used a half inch breaker bar and that got it loose. And it was this sucker that caused the problem. Whoever put it in last put it in a little too tight. There was a gasket that fell into my little makeshift oil pan down there. So i got to make sure that, that goes back on there. And the next step is taking this off and then the uh, radiator hose down there and the oil line down there too. And then I think we're done. I'll come out. Okay, so the next step is we're going to disconnect the lower radiator hose and the oil cooler lines. Looking from the top, if you look down here, right down there, you might not be able to see it on the video, but there is an oil line right where the tip of my finger is. And then over there, you'll see the radiator hose. So, and over there you can see it there. Take a look from the bottom. <coughs> And it's a little bit more difficult to see. Maybe we'll see it better this way. Oil hose is right there. Radiator hose is right here. So we're going to disconnect those and then we'll move on to the next step. Alright, so, so far, uh, we've gotten it down to the, uh, just the radiator hose on the bottom is all that's left to come off. I've already got the automatic transmission oil line off. Everything else is loose. Of course, the transmission line is giving me a hard time. I also think something that they didn't talk about is there's a line over there, which I think is attached to the bottom of the radiator. I think I'm going to have to get that loose, too, but I didn't see that in the instructions. But, of course, the bottom radiator hose is giving me a hard time, so I'm still working on that. Okay, finally, the moment we've all been waiting for. The bottom radiator hose is off. There's nothing else holding this back. And, uh, other than, you know, some parts might give me a little hard time, but it's all loose. So, I'm going to prop up this camera now and uh, see if we can get some video of me taking it out. Okay, so I got it out and I got it laying on the ground there. And, and peeing on the canvas, so that's okay. Looks like all we got left to do is take out this bolt, and that one there, and that one there, and we will have the shroud loose from the uh, radiator. So let me do that, and we'll see if we got anything left to do, and then we're running off to Napa. Okay, so the uh, hose there that was connected to the bottom, it's right there in your field of view, just didn't want to come off. So I decided to let it go and disconnected it. You can see right here is where it connects to, I believe that's going to the transmission. That should be the transmission fluid, as you see the transmission fluid uh, dipstick is right there. So I disconnected the clamp, which you'll see is sitting right here now. You can see that, yeah. Sitting right there, and I just kind of sit on this end. So when I pull the radiator out, i got to remember that, because I'll have to disconnect that cable, or that hose, and uh, take that into account when I put the new radiator in. Now, over here, as you can see, the radiator is still connected at the bottom, so I'm going to try pulling it up and see if I can get a better angle at it. But the uh, bottom intake of the transmission fluid is disconnected now. So it should all come out except for that bottom radiator hose. And then we can take the shroud off and take the radiator to Napa and get a new one. So, as you see, went to Napa, switched out the part. They didn't give me a hard time at all. Uh, just walked in the store and they told me, I told them, you know, hey, I got a part that's under warranty that broke. 
And they said, no problem. What do you need? What year is it? What model? All that. She ran back and grabbed it. And I signed the paper, and that was done. And as you notice, it came with the nuts that I need to put back together. So all i got to do is plug everything back in and slide it back down the big hole, and we'll be good to go. So here we go. I'm going to do that now. Okay, so you got a different angle now because I'm going to try and get this out. Everything is disconnected, so all i got to do is pull it out now. Um, and for those who just saw me for the first time, the reason for the hairnet is I've got incredibly long hair and it's driving me insane. So I went and grabbed the hairnet to keep it out of the way so I don't get motor oil and transmission fluid and all this other good junk into it. to make it a little bit easier to wash later. So, anyways, here we go. Everything loose, so it shouldn't give me too much of a hard time. Oh, I've got a transmission fluid line that's going to give me a hard time if I don't move it. There we go. Alright, here we go. Here it is. I'm looking at And... There we go. There's the radiator. Very cool. Now, what's next? Okay, so I took those three bolts off, and just as I suspected, that's it. There's the radiator all by its lonesome. Now we got to take it back to the parts store and trade it in. And hopefully they don't give me a hard time about it. Because if I didn't show you before, here's the reason the whole problem started. Right along here, you may not be able to see it because of this video, but I'll accent it later if I have the editing tools to do it. I'll show you. Right in here is a crack. And that crack, I'll push it a little bit, just enough to blow out a whole bunch of steam. And that's what caused the car to overheat in the first place, and that's why Vicky pulled over and called us to come help her. So, Looks like this is a manufacturer's defect because there's no reason why that should have broke uh, from our error or the person who installed this is error. So must have been something the manufacturer screwed up on, so they should be able to replace this. But anyways, now we're going to head out there and take care of that. Until then, 